finally, <laughs> I received my first invitation to a coding interview at a big tech company for a nice applied scientist position as an internship, obviously. For me, this is a big deal. I've applied like for the past two, two and a half months. And this is the first like invitation that I have. And I have never had such an invitation and I have never done such a coding interview. So this is my first time and I'll, be have, I'll have to prepare for this interview, obviously. But yeah, in general, I'm just doing this little vlog style, um, f uh, follow me around doing this prep for my coding interview. Um, and I'm excited. Please tell me what you think about this format. So since I am applying for an internship position, my application process or the interview steps are not that intense like for when I'm applying for a real position, right? There it's known to be like one coding assessment and then you have one day where you have like back-to-back -back interviews with coding questions and behavioral questions. I believe like four to six and that's quite intense. So if I understood this correctly and please correct me if I'm wrong, I'll have like this one coding assessment and then I will have one phone call with a hiring manager of the team and then we'll talk a bit about some interesting things. Um, and he also gave me some behavioral questions, but yeah. So enough of this talking around, let's get to the point. I will be doing a lot of lead code and a, a lot of hacker run, I believe this website is called. Hacker Rack, sorry, because that's also what Amazon uses. And yeah, so I've been doing lead code already since like Thursday and Friday. So now it's today, it's Saturday. It's now already pretty late. It's like 4 p.m. I don't have that much time to code today, but tomorrow tomorrow will be a quite intense day of lead code, lead code, lead code. Yesterday was an intense day of like, I believe seven to eight hours of lead code and hacker rank. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll now just jump into my session and we'll see each other after I have solved like a few problems, I guess. Okay, so that was two hours of lead coding. It's not that much time, but you know, it's fairly late. Um, but I worked on two medium question or medium hard questions and one hard question where the hard question was a follow-up question of the second medium question. Um, and yeah, it went pretty well. I'm feeling much more com uh, confident. And in the beginning, it was much worse. The point is that I was trying out a lot um, and spamming the submission button, honestly, which wasn't that smart, um, but that's no big deal. The thing is that often, or at least towards the end, um, I didn't fail the problem completely. I had a working solution, but just some test case of the unit tests were looking for time complexity, time complexity optimization, right? For fast algorithms. And that's something that I didn't always manage to do. I had working solutions, but in some cases they were just too slow. And I believe at least that that's true because I've read that somewhere or heard that somewhere that when applying to such jobs or, or um, internships, you don't have to pass all like 40 unit tests for one problem. It can be that the final three, four, five, I don't know, I'm coming, thinking of some random numbers, are like time complexity optimization unit tests, like where they just time how, how fast or how slow your algorithm runs. And if you don't pass those, but your solution is still a working solution, then it might be that you still get the invitation to progress in the interview stages. And I, at least that's what calms me down a bit and doesn't stress me completely. If I do happen to like fail the last three unit tests, I won't be that stressed out. That said, even though I had a working solution, obviously I wanted to look at the optimal solution and learn how to solve that optimally. And that's why I looked at solutions. And that is tip number one. Looking at solutions is not bad. In fact, I would highly recommend that. 
Working on a problem for like two hours and not getting anywhere is a huge waste of time. I honestly would say that if you're working on a problem and you're struggling for like 10, 15 minutes to even come up with an idea, or you're always just repeating the same idea and not getting anywhere, it's much better to look at the solutions and completely understand the solution, right? You look at how they solved it, what the code was doing, and at each individual line of code. For example, in this solution here, where I had to find duplicates in an array, I did have a solution which did work, but again, the final few unit tests didn't work out because it was simply too slow. I had a time uh, error, right? And then I looked at a solution and the solution was obviously much more elegant than mine um, and much more optimal. But I really understood the solution and wrote that down, right? Ideally, you would add comments and that is what I did before. This is another solution that I didn't come up with completely myself, but I read the solution, I understood it completely and added all those comments myself to really prove to myself that I understood the solution. And after I understood the solution, I deleted the code and tried to solve the problem again using the solution that I just looked at. And this is really a huge tip. So to make it short, don't be scared to look at solutions. It's not bad. If you're wasting like 10 to 15 minutes just staring at the problem and not getting anywhere, look at the solution, understand it, rewrite the code and solve the problem. Now I will, I believe I will just order in some food. I have, I have already cooked and I don't want to cook again. Um, and until the food arrives, I will still be working on some lead code, co lead code questions or problems. And I believe I'll just end this day here and we'll see each other tomorrow again, I guess. And the day after that, on Monday, I will hopefully be ready to actually uh, take the online coding assignment or uh, assessment. And I'll then let you know how I felt doing that assessment and how it went. So yeah, I'm again talking way too much. We'll just see each other tomorrow. Good morning, people. It's now about half past six. I know it's pretty early, but you know, it's kind of my thing. I like to get up early. Um, but yeah, today we'll go through a lot of lead code or uh, hacker rank. But for now, my goal will be to eat my little breakfast, nice little pancakes. It's Sunday, like, like I want to treat myself a bit. Um, pancakes with a bit of yogurt, honey and like cinnamon apples. Um, so now I will again eat my breakfast, go over again a few easy or medium or intermediate hacker rank questions while I'm eating, but then again get ready to go to the gym. Um, and after we went to the gym, I'll get back and then I'll get back to you. So yeah. I will just eat and do some hacker rank prompts and we'll see each other in a bit. And we are back. So gym, done. I took a shower, done. I made myself a little post-workout smoothie, done. And now I can get back to practicing, I guess. So I think I will be going for like three hours again, doing mainly hacker rank, I believe. And if that goes like too easily, I might just switch again to lead code, but let's just see how the problems go. Um, and after this session, I believe I'll get back to you and talk about what types of problems I'm actually solving. I think that might be very interesting. So yeah, let's just let's just get back to work, I guess. And I'll see you guys in a second.
So yeah, um, let me quickly go over what type of problems I have been solving so far. And let's see, definitely I've been solving a few tree traversal problems, right? You have some sort of tree and you want to traverse down the tree and print out all the values. Then you want to implement some um, BFS, for example, breadth first search, I believe, yeah. Um, one problem that was really tricky actually was you have some subtree or some secondary tree and some main tree and you want to see if this secondary tree uh, structure is a subtree of the main tree. That one was really tricky actually. I believe I have to revisit this again because I don't think I could solve that from scratch again. Um, but yeah. Then also a lot of linked list stuff, right? Insert an element into the linked list at position N, uh, merge two linked lists or two sorted linked lists and stuff like that. So what else? And a lot of uh, dealing with arrays and sub arrays, right? It's like sliding window approaches, problems where you have to have like two pointers that start at some position and end at some position. and do stuff like with that, finding pairs that where the difference is equal to some value, um, or like find the, the smallest sub array, the sum of the, sm like the small sub array, uh, where the sum is the smallest, sorry. You know, different things like in that area. That one, those were pretty high volume, like I did a lot of those actually. And then I did one dynamic programming exercise which was actually pretty easy in my opinion. So I don't believe that I will, doing, will be doing too much more of those. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's mainly <laughs> the types of problems that I've been solving that really have a, a specific algorithmic background, right? There are other problems that are simply like, think of a smart way of solving the problem without having a specific like strategy like sliding window approach tree traversal working with linked lists and stuff like that um but that said i believe there won't be too, all too much interesting stuff happening the rest of the day i will be now eating some lunch and then i will continue working on hacker rank and lead code until like 7 p.m then i'll get cooking for dinner and i'll go to bed so yeah, I believe today is enough <laughs> and I will then mentally prepare for tomorrow and I will see you guys tomorrow. So till then. Okay, good morning people. It is Monday morning and I am ready to take the test. I mean, at this point it's just, it is what it is. We'll see what comes. Maybe I'll have luck and the question won't be that difficult. Maybe I'm just going to be screwed but hey we're going to see what how it goes um so let me not waste any more time and i will get back to you when i'm done with the test and we are done okay so i had two problems to solve in 70 minutes and honestly they weren't that difficult um it was nothing crazy like some tree traversal, it wasn't something crazy like a, a dynamic programming problem or a sliding window problem or something linked list, N nothing, nothing like that. So I think I did decently well, I had in pretty much instantly had an idea how to solve those and the, the, the second exercise or problem I even later managed to optimize a tiny bit um, and didn't get any time. Uh, limit exceeded errors but still I, I'm not sure I had like six from 15 test cases in my first problem and like seven from 13 in my second problem and, I'm, and I was like okay I'm done that's like pretty much not even the half in the first half of the test cases in the first problem and pretty much the ha half of the test cases in the second problem so yeah I was really unsure but I actually got pretty much got, I pretty much instantly got a email which says that they want to discuss and schedule a phone, the phone interview with me. So I guess, I guess I passed the first coding assessment. Wow. Um, I mean, that's pretty nice. By the way, the position will be in Bar Barcelona, Spain. 
So that's also pretty interesting and exciting. I pretty much just applied to every location there is and want to get a nice cool internship. That obviously also made sense with my um, with my like research interests. Um, so yeah, um, I will now head, go on and fill in the form that they want me to fill in uh, to schedule a to schedule the phone interview, and will then soon have to prepare for that <laughs> on top of my regular uni schedule. I don't know how I will do that, but. Yeah, that's that's quite exciting. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that should be enough. I've already talked way too much for this video, but you know, this is as real as it gets. I, I, just, I instantly took my phone out and wanted to record my process and my experience. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that those one or two tips um, could bring you some value and were helpful. And potentially also to see that you don't even have to pass like even the half of the test cases to get an invite, at least for this internship position. I mean, I don't know how it is for every other positions. Um, but yeah, I guess that should be enough. And if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like. It really helps me out a lot. And if you want to follow along my journey of applying to different big tech companies for machine learning research positions or applied research or machine learning engineers, everything surrounding machine learning, um, then feel free to subscribe to this channel. And with that said, as always, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.